This is the second in a series of videos designed to teach you the basics of HTML5. In the second video, I'll be demonstrating how to use text. This is the HTML code that we'll be starting with. In the body section, we have two P elements that represent paragraphs. The text in between the start and end P tags will be displayed in the browser. Let's take a look at this. Here we have our two paragraphs, and you'll notice that the paragraphs are separated by extra space in between them so it's easy to see where a new paragraph starts. Also notice that the text word wraps, so if I change the width of the browser, then the text will adjust. Now let's go back to the HTML code and add some spaces between a couple of the words. So right here I'll press the space key several times to add extra spaces between these words. Now let's save the file and refresh the browser. You'll notice that there is no change. That's because the browser doesn't display the extra spaces. Now let's go back to the HTML code. I'll remove these extra spaces and this time I'll press the enter key a couple of times. Now I'll save the file and refresh the browser. Again you'll notice that there's no change. The browser didn't start a new line here where I press the enter key. But there is a way to tell the browser to start a new line by using the br element. This element represents a line break. The br element is useful in cases where line breaks are actually part of the content that we want to display. As for example, an address. So let's look at how we could use it for an address. I'll remove this paragraph and paste in a new one that has three br elements. The br element doesn't have an end tag, so we only need to add start tags. Here is a br element between name and address, and here is another one between address and city, and here is one more between state and zip code. So now I'll save the file and refresh the browser. Here we can see the line breaks that were added so that the address is displayed on multiple lines. Now let's take a look at heading elements. I'll paste in some examples. There are six levels of heading elements. They are H1 through H6. The H1 element has the highest rank and the H6 element has the lowest. Let's take a look at these in the browser. You can see that the browser used a different font size for each rank of heading element. Now let's look at how you could actually use heading elements. I'll paste in some example code. Here, the H1 element is used as a heading for the whole main section. The H2 elements are used as headings for the subsections. By the way, this extra space that I've added here and here is just to make the HTML code easier to read. It's not required and it won't change how the page is displayed in the browser. Now let's save the file and refresh the browser. We used the H1 element for the main heading and we used H2 elements for these subheadings. So now, what if you wanted to center one or more of the headings or change the font or change the color or size of the font? This can be done with CSS, which is short for Cascading Style Sheets. I'm not going to be covering CSS in this video series, but I do have another video series that you can watch to help you get started with CSS. What I want to do here is to give you an idea of what it's for. CSS is an important part of web page design because it's used to add formatting and styling to HTML documents. You can use it to set the style, color, and size of your text. You can use it to set a background image or to position things. If you want it to add a border around something, you can do that with CSS. There are quite a few characteristics that CSS can control. To give you an idea of what CSS looks like, I'll show you a quick example. I'll use it to center the H1 element and to change its color to red. I'll do this by adding a style attribute to the H1 element. By the way, this is not the only way that styles can be added, and the other methods for adding styles have some definite advantages, but this is a good method just to give you a sampling of CSS. We start by adding the name of the attribute, which is style. Then style is followed by an equal sign, and the equal sign is followed by a pair of quotation marks. The CSS styling goes between the quotation marks. To center the text, I type text-align, followed by a colon, followed by center. 
Then I type a semicolon to separate it from the next style. Then I type color followed by a colon followed by red. Now I'll save the file and refresh the browser. Now you can see that the heading has been centered and the text color is red. As I said earlier, I'm not going to be covering CSS in this video series, but I wanted to give you a taste of what it can do. CSS is a very important part of making great looking web pages. After you finish watching this HTML video series, I would encourage you to watch my CSS video series to learn more. Well, that concludes this video. You can find the code used in this video at littlewebhut.com. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.